Hi everybody, I'm Jared Pike. This is Shell Point Today for Tuesday, November 5th. On today's show, author and naval historian Robert Maycomber previews his two academy classes this week. Fine Mark Bank will give us some safety tips for our credit cards, and we'll also go out to the garden and tell you how the Shell Point Garden Society can help you learn to sculpt bonsai trees. But first, do you have confidential papers or bills that you need to be destroyed safely and securely? Well, we've got just the service for you, and it's free. Finemark Bank is sponsoring a document shredding service, which allows you to bring boxes of old papers or documents to be securely shredded and disposed at no charge. They'll be in front of the Village Church this morning from 8.30 to 10.30 a.m. And you don't even have to get out of your car or golf cart. Just drive on through and they'll take care of the rest. Shredding old documents is a smart way to protect your financial information. Another way is keeping a close watch on your current credit card statements. Just how protected are you if someone got a hold of your credit card? Well, Fine Mark Bank is here with some credit card tips. Hello, I'm Tiffany Williams, Managing Executive at Finemark National Bank and Trust on the island with today's Finemark Minute. While many consumers still like using paper money, more people than ever are pulling out their credit or debit cards to make purchases. And as card usage has grown, so has the number of criminals trying to steal your information. If you are ever the victim of credit or debit card theft or fraud, Catching it fast and reporting it to your cart issuer is key to resolving the situation. And while federal laws and industry practices protect consumers in these situations, there are important differences depending on the type of card. In general, under the Truth in Lending Act, your cap for liability for unauthorized charges on a credit card is $50. But if your debit card or ATM card is lost or stolen or unauthorized purchases have been discovered, your maximum liability is limited to $50, only if you notify your bank within two business days. If you wait more than two business days, your ATM or debit card losses under the law could go up to $500 or potentially more. That's why it's extremely important to closely monitor your bank statements and credit card bills. Open them as soon as they arrive in your mailbox and contact your institution if your bank statement or credit card bill doesn't arrive when it's normally scheduled. This could be a sign that someone has stolen your mail and or account information. Also, if you have online banking, you can monitor your accounts whenever you want on your phone or your computer. While the law limits your losses if you fall victim, your protections are much stronger the earlier you react. If you have any questions, you can always stop by Finemark on the Island or give us a call. We'd be happy to help you. Our number is 461-5999. I'm Tiffany Williams with today's Finemark Minute. We have some info now for people who deal with hearing loss and people who deal with vision loss. First, hearing. If you are considering buying a hearing aid, it's important to know what to expect. And the best way to do that is to attend a session with Shelley Rogerson of Belltone Hearing Aids. She'll bring her expertise to a free seminar tomorrow at 10.15 a.m. in the Manatee Room on the island. Now, if it's vision loss you're struggling with, we have people that can help you there as well. Caitlin Kramer-Smith has been a guest on this show, and she's coming next week to discuss practical tips on living with low vision. It's part of the Vision Enrichment Group, who have their first meeting of the season next Tuesday, November 12th at 10.15 a.m. in the Social Center. All are welcome to this informative event. Now, if you have any questions about the Vision Enrichment Group, call Angie Pritchard at 454-2134 or Sandy Weber at 225-2929. We have a word now for all the green thumbs in our audience. Whether you have a garden or just like talking about gardens, you're invited to the Shell Point Garden Society, meeting tomorrow 
at 11 a.m. in the Woodlands Oak Room. Their special guest is Jim Bremer, president of the Bonsai Society of Southwest Florida, and he'll show you how you can get started on bonsai sculpting. We asked the two resident chairs of the Garden Society to talk about this group. The Shell Point Garden Society started about four years ago when Sue Moore said to me, you know we need a garden club. And Shell Point made it really easy for us to start a garden club. There's much to learn about Florida gardening. A lot of people, especially new people down here, are used to gardening up north, but it's a whole different experience down here. Different plants, different kind of soil, different um, acidity in the soil. Um, it just is a very different experience down here, so there is a lot to learn. I was a Virginia gardener, and um, I was used to planting in April and harvesting before the middle of October. So that was my planting schedule. And I was used to clay soil where you had to add lots of peat moss. And we even added sand in Virginia. <laughs> so here we had to learn how to deal with porous soil where you have to fertilize a lot. And we didn't need to add any sand in Florida. So garden lovers, if you're a garden lover, we hope you will consider coming to our meetings and we want everybody to feel included whether you're an actual gardener with dirt under your nails or not. In November we're going to um, have someone speak on bonsai and they will sculpt a tree while we watch. Um, in December um, a friend of, of Sue's, is Penny Crawford, is coming from Rose Glen Gardens and she's going to talk about growing Florida roses, roses in Florida. January is exciting because uh, we have never talked about gardening for your health. Melanie and Christine and Michelle works with Shell Point um, Fitness. So uh, they're going to talk about uh, how to uh, prepare yourself for gardening and how gardening can help you, um, your physical body health. And how to weed without killing yourself. That's right. We don't, we don't want any pain from gardening. I think gardening is wonderful because it's one of the very few things that we can control. There's so much of my life that I don't seem to be able to control, but in my garden, I'm it. If I don't like it, I tear it out. If I like it, I develop it and maybe share it with somebody else. Plants are exciting and they're wonderful. One of the best parts of living at Shell Point is our waterfront location. Of course, our waterfront also has a fascinating history, as reflected by local author Robert Maycomber, whose historical novels document the naval history of southwest Florida, as well as far-flung locales in the Atlantic and Pacific. His latest book, Honors Rendered, focuses on the South Pacific, which was dominated by Germany before World War I. He'll be discussing this book tomorrow at 2.15 p.m. in the Social Center. We asked Robert about how he does eyeball recon to accurately research his books. Hi, I'm Terry Coleth, and I'm here today with Robert Maycomber. I just returned from my fifth uh, journey in the Pacific. I was there for six weeks, and um, I was doing re uh, lectures uh, and then I did some research and then I was doing a lot of writing. I wrote, uh, let me think, over 30,000 words uh, to finish the rough draft of next year's novel, uh -huh. which is set in 1889 Pacific in the German Empire of the Pacific. That's going to be fascinating. Most people don't know there was a German Empire no. in the Pacific. The Germans owned uh, New Guinea, Samoa, the Marshall Islands, the Caroline Islands, the Bismarcks, uh, the Solomon Islands, uh, they owned a lot of the Pacific, and the Marianas, and uh, so many other island groups. And um, it's, a, it's a great look at a significant event that happened in 1889 that changed world history. It, was there a presence of the German people in these islands? Oh yes, they were all colonies. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, the German fleet was there, and the American fleet was there, and therein lies the conflict in the story. So there was uh, actually a fair amount of uh, action in the Pacific in World War I. Uh, the Royal Navy of Great Britain suffered its worst defeat in over a century during, in, in the Pacific during World War I. Uh, but I'm going to key in on my favorite ocean raider of the Pacific, and he was a German naval officer, uh, and he was known as the Gentleman Bandit. He was beloved by his, by his foes and treated as a hero after the war by both the British side and the German side. Interesting. Well, this is fascinating. I know um, being an award-winning maritime author, you do what we call, what you call the eyeball research. Eyeball recon. Recon. And yeah. it gives us such a wonderful taste, a, a really feeling like we're there with you, not only in your novels, but in your talks. Thank you. And Thank we're you. grateful. Join Robert Maycomber tomorrow at 2.15 p.m. in the Social Center as he discusses his latest book, Honors Rendered. And on Thursday, you have a second unique opportunity to benefit from Robert's experience. He is teaching an all-day writing workshop where you'll learn how to plan your project, get organized, write effectively, and connect to your readers. He's offered this workshop all over the world, but never in Southwest Florida until now. Sign up for Robert Maycomber's all-day writing workshop Thursday, starting at 9.15 a.m. in the Social Center on the island. Now it's time to cover all of Tuesday's happenings from Resort Services. Then stay tuned for your Academy News, Menus, and Village Church Connections. Hi everybody and welcome to the Happenings segment of Shell Point TV. I'm Bev Chandley and this is Leslie Brand. We're going to go over what activities we offer for you folks here at Shell Point today. At 7.15, we have an early Health Connections class, Bend, Breathe, and Balance. That'll be held in the Health Club on the island. 8 o'clock, we'll find the Round Robin Men's Doubles Tennis down at the Woodlands Tennis Courts. At 8.15, the Stamp Ministry will be in the Stamp Room down in the Tunnel. We move to 8.30, where Bocce will be played down at the Woodlands Bocce Court. At 8.30, Fine Mark Bank Shredding Service will be at the Village Church. It'll be there from 8.30 to 10.30. Also at 8.30, we have the Ladies Golf Association. They'll be at the Shell Point Golf Club. 9 o'clock is the time the Suzy Q will be heading out for a sightseeing tour. Sign up is required at the Island Greeters Desk. At 9.15, the Caregiver Support Group and Memory Care Group will be in the second floor rehab center. Sign up is required for that. At 9.15, we have open painting down in the art studio. Match play mixed doubles tennis will be at 9.30 down at the tennis courts. Then at 10.15, we have Through the Bible Bible Study Group in the Osprey Room. At 10.30, the Caregiver Support Group and Memory Care Group will be at the second floor Rehab Center. Then we have another Suzy Q trip at 11 o'clock, this time to Rum Runners for lunch. Sign up is required. Our last morning activity is at 11.45. We have a Health Connections class, Living Healthy. That'll be in the Osprey Room on the island. Now here's Leslie for your afternoon lineup. Well, Bev, at 12.30 is the Mixed Progressive Bridge in the Game Room. 1.15 is the Knitters Group on the Osprey Room on the island. Also at 1.15 we have Shuffleboard on the Shuffleboard Courts. At 1.15 is the Rollicking Recorderist in the Tarpon Room. And lastly, at 1.15 is the Women's Ministries Prayer in the Hospitality Room. 1.30 is the Stamp Ministry in the Sable Room on the Woodlands. 2.45 is the Health Connections, the Balance and Mobility Training, Level 2, but it is closed. 3.30 is the Health Connections, the Shell Point Pole Walking Care Class in the Oak Room, and sign-up is required. Lastly for today is 6.45, the Hymn Sing and the Resident Activity Center on the island. Thank you for tuning in with us today, and I hope you have a great rest of your Tuesday. Hi, I'm Terry Kolath with your Academy Information for Tuesday. At 9.30, Advanced Memoirs on the Computer continues in the Computer Teaching Center at the Woodlands. At 10 o'clock, Islam, its origins, growth, and future begins in the Grand Cypress Room of the Woodlands. You may sign up right at the course. 
At 10.15, Apple iPad Tips and Techniques will begin in the Manatee Room on the island and sign up is required. At 1.15, we have a how-to, using a word processor, taking place in the Computer Teaching Center of the island. And at 1.15, our storytelling class continues in the Manatee Room on the island. At 2.15, Why Do the Nations Rage? Session 3 will take place in the Village Church. Tomorrow, we have two new classes, Flash Drive Prep School and Inside the Story, Honors Rendered. Menus for Tuesday. In the crystal room, the crystal platter is chicken stew in a bread bowl with green beans. The dinner special is pan fresh night for eleven ninety five, and the soup of the day is baked potato. In the Island Cafe for lunch on Tuesday, enjoy a chicken tender wrap with chips for seven twenty five. The dinner special is country fried steak with mashed potatoes and green beans for eight twenty five. Dinner specials in the Palm Grill on Tuesday are veal marsala for fifteen ninety five, or Chilean sea bass for twenty ninety five. All menus are available 24 hours a day at www.shellpoint.net. Hi, I'm Randy Woods, and I'm here with Priscilla Waltz, and we're talking about the shoebox ministry with Samaritan's Purse. Priscilla, thank you for being with me today, and thank you for all you've done already this season to encourage this program. And tell me, how is the program going? Well, if, it, if the absence of boxes is any indication... We're down to about 75 that have not been taken. Oh. So there are still some for people that want to get involved. Okay. Or that want to do a second or a third box. So themselves. there are empty shoe boxes available at the church. Anytime this week, stop by and pick them up yeah. and fill the box. What can we put in the box as we want to share these gifts with boys and girls around the world? What kinds of things? A t shirt, a little book, maybe. Oh, nice. A stuffed toy. I found some cute paper hankies that are Oh, that's cute. Peanuts. Yes, with a little so they have on their there. own. Charlie Brown. Uh, a bar of soap and a washcloth. Okay. Candy. One of these, you oh, know. Noise maker, yes. <laughs> Inspire some musicianship there. And school supplies. Uh, pencils, pens. Uh, if you send pencils, be sure and include a pencil sharpener. Okay. Well, that's practical. A uh, flashlight, toothbrush, toothpaste, combs. Well, the personal items and toys, all those things, yeah. obviously appropriate for a small child, whether a boy or a girl. You can make right. those selections. Well, tell me, what has inspired you to be motivated to promote a project like this? I think the uh, visuals that they that Samaritan's Purse has. Uh, allowed the congregations to use as part mm. of their publicity has excited me almost more than anything else. Well, it is a joy to see the smile oh. on those faces, the young boys it's and girls, and we realize so many have very little yes. of anything. Right. And a box like this brings a great joy. That's right. It's a surprise. Mm -hmm. And I know that our church members folks in the community, Shell Point staff have all participated yes. in the past. We've done over 300 boxes in the past. What is our goal this year? 400. 400. And there are only um, at least 400. Mm -hmm. And we can do more than one box? Oh, yes. We'd be okay. happy to have you do just as many as you want. Okay. And if you run out of boxes from the church, you can get the plastic shoe boxes okay. and use those. Or you can use just a shoe box. Just a basic shoe box. Yes, but don't seal it, please. Okay. Yeah, it is important. The instructions are on the little brochure yes. that tell us how to prepare the box and just put a rubber band around it mm -hmm. so as to keep all the contents secure. Right. And then we'll pack them up and ship them. Okay. Well, I appreciated the guide here as it speaks, preparing the box for a boy or a girl. Mm -hmm. Also some instructions if you'd like to make a contribution, a donation to support right. the ministry. And it's really neat that uh, we can participate, share a gift like this, and knowing that it's going to make a big difference in a small child's life. Not only that, but they get the message of Jesus. 
Yes. That's the, that is important the to remember best part. that the gospel presentation right. is included with each box. Yes. And there are scriptures that are represented mm -hmm. and presented in the box, good story material mm -hmm. and educational and inspiring material right. that will encourage the young children. Yes. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And there's good follow up too. Yes. Both locally with uh, native pastors or native Christian leaders mm -hmm. as well as the uh, home office and their follow-up with okay. supplying materials for them. Good. Well, I know you've seen some of the pictures of the children. I would encourage folks to stop by the church if they haven't gotten a shoebox or if you'd like to get another one mm -hmm. and start bringing them back, filled with the goodies for the boys and girls, bringing them back this Sunday. The collection date, if I remember correctly, is November 10th through the 17th. Correct. Mm -hmm. And we'll have all the boxes brought back to the church and then sent off to the distributor where they'll be available and sent off around the world. Right. For more information about the ministry, be sure to contact Samaritan's Purse. You can get it on the website at SamaritansPurse.org or get one of the brochures here at the Village Church and that will help you. It's interesting that if you're really technically savvy, you can follow your box. You can get a barcode and follow your box to know which country your box has been traveling to to be given to a small child. Well, it's an exciting ministry and great to be a part of it. Thank you for all your work to encourage oh, and it. make it available for all of us to participate here. Thank you. Thank you, Priscilla. And thank you for what you're doing to fill the boxes and share the joy with children around the world this year through the ministry of Samaritan's Purse in the shoe boxes. Have a great day. We're glad you joined us for today's show. Tune in tomorrow as we talk with Rose Donnelly, who utilized her employee Christmas gift by paying it forward. We'll also tag along with a group of residents who go bowling every Wednesday, and another group who visited the beautiful destination of Picnic Island. Until then, this is Shell Point Today for Tuesday, November 5th. I'm Jared Pike, and from all of us here at Shell Point TV, we hope you have a great day, and we'll see you again tomorrow.